Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing yet another discovery coming from our own galaxy, the Milky Way, of another unusual structure that nobody knew existed until very recently. And this time the structure seems to be the first officially confirmed feather in one of the spiral arms of our galaxy. With a typical example of a feather galaxy being this one right here, NGC 2775. And you can sort of see it has all of these unusual structures all over the place that sort of resemble feathers. And what this new study suggests is that there is apparently one not so far away from where we are located here in the solar system. So first of all, honestly when I originally saw this study, which as always you can find in the description below, I actually thought that they are talking about something that was recently discovered only a few months ago and this was just another way of naming this particular structure. I'm referring to the video from just a few months ago, which by the way should be popping up somewhere right there at some point, where the scientists essentially discovered what they referred to as the spiral arm break. An unusual formation inside one of the spiral arms not so far away from the solar system that was implied to be one of the potential feathers as well. Although in this case it really resembled what we usually refer to as a spur, a kind of a connection between two different spiral arms and it also had an extremely high angle here was about 60 degrees and it was going through the Sagittarius arm, this arm right here, with the sun being located in this region. But this recent study was surprisingly talking about a similar yet a completely different structure, one located in a region known as the Norma arm, so this arm right here, and that also seemed to possess a lot more wavy structures on the inside and also be a little bit larger in size, roughly around 6000 light years across. And so this, of course, is once again a somewhat surprising discovery, especially since it's only been a few months since the first discovery. Although I guess it's not really that surprising. And there's really a good reason for that that I mentioned in the previous video. For us, living inside the galaxy, and so basically we're somewhere here, it's sort of difficult to visualize, to imagine, and to study the structure of our own galaxy. We can only do so by first of all looking at some other galaxies, especially the ones that we think might resemble the Milky Way, and then by comparing what they have to what we see near us. And this way we can maybe start imagining what the Milky Way looks like. At the moment though, it's really a lot of guesswork. For example, NGC 2775 right here is also a spiral galaxy, but it's what's known as the flocculent spiral galaxy. It doesn't really have very defined spiral arms, and instead has a lot of these feathers everywhere. Whereas by looking at something like UGC 12158, we find a galaxy with very defined spiral arms and practically no feathers anywhere. And so trying to figure out which of these the Milky Way is has always been sort of the goal for a lot of astronomers. And typically in most astronomy books, Milky Way is always presented as something like this. But it looks like this is maybe not the correct model. And it might resemble something more similar to this but with more defined spiral arms. Or I guess to be more exact, the galaxy seems to possess at least one major feather, but chances are there are going to be more discovered in some of the future studies. So what exactly did the scientists discover in this recent study? So even though it's implied that it's some sort of a feather like in some of the other galaxies, the actual wording the scientists use is a sinusoidal wave. And they name this wave Gangotri wave, which is the name of the glacier that's responsible for providing pretty much all of the water in the biggest river in India, the Ganges river. With this being a pretty long wave as well, it's at least 6000 light years in length, but possibly as long as 12000 light years long, so it's actually one of the longest structures discovered in the last few years. It's also located about 15 to 17000 light years away from the center of the galaxy, and if we were to combine the entire mass of this object, it would be around 9 million masses of the Sun. That's basically about double the total mass of the central black hole. But why exactly did the scientists only discover this now? Well, one of the obvious reasons is because the gas that's actually all over the place in the central galaxy is sort of hiding a lot of this from our view. But at the same time, it's really because of the type of gas that was studied in this particular study. They relied on the study of carbon monoxide, so they were actually tracing the motion of carbon monoxide in distant parts of our galaxy. And it just so happens that this object had just enough carbon monoxide on the inside to be easily traceable across vast distances of space, allowing the scientists to then map the structure. But naturally it's not made of carbon monoxide, it just has enough of it to be traceable. The vast majority of the mass of this object, like everything else in our galaxy, is made out of hydrogen. 
And so by using the surveys that were focusing on carbon monoxide, they were able to uncover this unusual formation. And just like the feathers in some of the other galaxies, this one also seems to connect to some of the other spiral arms as well. It sort of extends away from Norma, connecting with the other arms located very close to the center of the galaxy, and very likely forming connections with some other arms as well. And that's of course just an assumption based on what the scientists have seen in a lot of other galaxies. Normally, these feather formations do extend and connect a lot of arms and sort of act as these miniature bridges with a lot of gas traveling across these arms and thus allowing the gas to mix over time. And here it's also important for me to mention that overall, a lot of these spiral arms are not actually constant structures. They do constantly change and transform over time with a lot of stars going in and out as well as a lot of gas traveling across both the spiral arms and the space located between the arms themselves. So generally speaking, these types of feathers or these types of spurs are most likely used as basically bridges, with gas moving in and out of different arms and transferring from one place to another. And previous simulations from various studies involving these feathers from various galaxies discovered that a lot of these feathers form in certain types of galaxies when they have certain type of gas. For example, this study from 2006 discovered that the gas itself has to be relatively cold. It's only about 1000 Kelvin, which is extremely cold compared to the normal gas we find in the interstellar space, which is usually thousands and thousands of degrees. And so when gas is cold enough and when certain conditions are met, these feathers start to form naturally and connect various spiral arms. And also it's important to note that cold gas is also associated with the formation of stars. So it's quite possible that it's really star forming galaxies that generally form these unusual formations and thus allow a lot of gas that would produce stars to transport from one place to another. But that's of course just a speculation and our current understanding of all of these structures is extremely basic. As a matter of fact, the most recent study on these formations and the analysis of these formations, which as always you can find in the description below, determined that there is also a kind of a, what the scientists refer to as a wiggle instability that's usually responsible for forming some of these structures. So in other words, the spiral arms are just not stable enough and possibly have some other features in order to produce these unusual objects. And obviously their origin and of course their purpose at the moment is a big mystery to us. Or at least it's a big mystery to me. I mean, someone out there might have already solved the mystery, but I guess I just haven't found their paper yet. As a matter of fact, some studies or some astronomers have even looked here on planet Earth to try to find a solution to some of these problems. A spider web is actually one such potential solution. It seems that a lot of spiral galaxies, just like spider web, seem to form these spurs and a lot of similar formations just to sort of maintain the structure. But once again, speculation not currently known. And also honestly, I'm just fascinated with spider webs, so I just wanted to show you this video. And you gotta admit, there's definitely some similarity between the spiral here and the spiral we have in a typical galaxy. Pretty cool similarity. But apart from that, well, that's pretty much it for this discovery. An interesting feather, somewhat unusual structure that a lot of scientists will be talking about in some of the future studies. For now though, a very preliminary discovery and a discovery that needs to be analyzed more. And considering that this is a second such structure discovered in the Milky Way in just the last few months, there's possibly a high chance that something similar to this might be discovered in some of the future studies in the next year or so, simply because of these new techniques used in these studies, which once again might help us understand what the Milky Way looks like from the outside. But until these future discoveries, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out all of the relevant links in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.